Hello everyone, welcome to another Shadow War Armageddon video. So I've had a few questions asking me about the specialists and how they're going to work, or the special operatives as, as they're actually called in the rulebook. So basically, how that works is after every game, you um, if you win, lose or draw, you're going to get at least one Prometheum cash. And basically the way you win the campaign is by getting to 15 Prometheum caches first. So that's the long running implications of it. Obviously, if you lo lose or draw, you get one. If you win, you get D3. And then before the next game, you can choose to spend one to hire one of the uh, specialists for your race. So I'll cover the Space Marine ones first. So we have the Apocryphary. I'll show you the, uh, the stats and stuff here. So he has movement 4, weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 4, strength of 4, toughness 4, 1 wound, one in, um, 4 initiative, uh, 2 attacks, leadership 9. He has uh, a chainsaw, bolt pistol, frag and crack grenades and power armor. And then he has a field medic rule which is... Fighters within 3 inches of a friendly apocryphary subtract 2 from a recovery phase injury rolls to a minimum of 1, including for injuries caused by toxic weapons or toxic rounds. In addition, after a battle you can choose to re-roll any serious injury roll. So they'll help keep you guys in the fight. And we have the Space Marine Veteran. He is... Oh, that looks in focus. Uh, movement 4, weapon skill 4, by skill 4, strength 4, toughness 4, uh, 1 wound, initiative 4, 2 attacks, leadership 9. Then he comes with lots of war gear options. A Space Marine veteran has a bolt gun with a telescopic sight or razor dot, that's red dot laser sight, bolt pistol, frag and crack grenades, power armor. He may also do any of the following. Exchange his bolt gun for a storm bolt, a flamer, plasma gun, melter gun, chainsaw, power sword, or power fist. Exchange his bolt pistol for a plasma pistol. Exchange his bolt gun and power fist for a pair of whitening claws. So basically, you get a kick ass elite guy who's going to run around and mess stuff up for you. Then, most broken of all, maybe, we'll see. We have the Terminator. These guys are. Movement 4, web skill 4, blitz skill 4, strength 4, toughness... You've a pattern here, come on guys, you must know what pattern now. Um, war gear, unsurprisingly, they have Terminator armor. He is a power sword, storm bolter, Terminator armor. He may exchange his power sword for a power fist. He may exchange his power sword and storm bolter for a pair of lightning claws or for a thunder hammer and storm shield. No assault cannons, no cyclones, come on guys. Definitely no cyclones and assault, uh, assault cannons. They're not old-fashioned um, <laughs> Space Wolf Terminators, and they couldn't do it even then. Killer reputation. The Space Marine Terminator causes fear. And then bounty. If a Space Marine Terminator is down or out of action at the end of a mission, the enemy kill team secures an additional pr Prometheum cache. So, definitely a chancy one, but... 2 plus save on 2d6 with a 5 up in von is uh, pretty tasty. Then lastly for the Space Marine Scouts we have the uh, Death Watch Veteran. This guy is movement 4, web skill 4, blitz skill 4, strength 4, toughness 4, 1 wound, initiative 4, 2 attacks and leadership of 9. Then war gear wise the uh, Veteran has a bolt gun with Hellfire bolts, telescopic sight, a red dot laser sight, frag and crack grenades, power armor. He may also do any of the following. So he may take a silencer. He may take a power maul, a power sword, or a storm shield. Exchange his bolt gun and Hellfire bolts for power maul and storm shield, or a power sword and storm shield or shotgun. He is a Xenos hunter. When attacking Orc fighters with a Death Watch veteran in hand to hand combat, you score critical hits on a 5 or a 6 instead of a 6. So, a bit tailored. Obviously, I'd imagine that the rules will be expanded to include the Tyranids and stuff once they get there. But for now, it's just the Orcs with the wording of that. Just going to change that slightly. 
Then let's take a look at the orcs. We have the Flash Gate. Everybody's favourite. He is. Movement 4, weapon skill 4, policy skill 2. We've had a change. I get to say something different. Strength 4, toughness 4, 2 wounds. Initiative of 3, 3 attacks, and a leadership of 7. And this guy has got a snazzy gun with Git Finder. A shank, stick bombs, squid hide armor. In addition, a flash git may exchange a shank for a cutlass. He is a crack shot. When you roll an injury roll for shooting attacks made by the flash git, you can re-roll or die. Know that this only applies when making the initial injury roll for a shooting attack. Injury rolls made during the recovery phase follow all of normal rules. So, hits hard, but it's still an orc, so... I would probably be looking at one of the other ones. Um, well, they're all pretty tasty, to be honest. Good fun. We're Runt Herd and D6 Gretchen. Grots, whatever you want to call them, I don't mind. Um, so we have profiles for everybody. The Grots move a little bit faster. The Runt Herd is standard arc profile. Then he has uh, a grabber stick and slugger, stick bomb, squig tiger armor, whip, and with Gretchen armed with grot blasters and shanks. He may exchange his um, grabber stick for a grot prodder, exchange a squig hide whip for a squig hound. As long as the runt herd didn't go out of action after a mission, you have 50 extra points to spend on your recruit or rearm action. That's good. We'll get to that on the next video. So I'm probably going to do these in the wrong order, but people are asking for this first, so there we go. Uh, useless Grots. Grots are considered to be new recruits. Their presence is in no way encouraging. Fair enough. Sounds a bit legit. Mad Grot. If a runt herd is accompanied by a single Gretchen, it's a particularly mean one. Add one to a Gretchen's attack characteristic. So if you roll a one on the D6 Grots, the Grot changes his attacks to two attacks instead of one. So makes up for it slightly. Then we have the mech. So this guy is movement four, weapon skill four, but skill two, strength three. Tough. No, oh no, what's happening? There we go. I knew I shouldn't have tried new overlays. Stupid cameras. Um, one wound, initiative two, attack two, and leadership seven. So this guy is um, with Swigger, Wrench, Stick Bomb, Swig Hide Armor. It may also do the following. Please be Shock Attack Gun. No, it's not a Shock Attack Gun. Unfortunately not. Exchange for a Swigger for a custom Mega Swigger. Exchange for a wrench for a kill saw. Um, uh, if the mech was deployed, you can re-roll a first failed ammo roll in the mission, regardless of which fighter's weapon is being rolled for. And the mechanic. Fighters within three inches of a friendly mech can re-roll failed ammo rolls. So on reliability, it's okay. The pain boy. Um, this one will show the stats, but standard arc profile again. Well, characterish weeder profile. Two wounds and three attacks of his standouts. A pain boy is armed with docks tools and an urti syringe and sh um, squig hide armor. He is a medic. As long as a pain boy didn't go out of action, you can re roll a serious injury roll for one fighter after a mission. And the war dock. Fighters within 3 inches of a friendly pain boy subtract 2 from a recovery phase injury rolls to a minimum of 1. In addition, fighters within 6 inches of a friendly pain boy can use the pain boy's initiative char characteristic when testing to escape pinning early as long as the pain boy is not down or broken. Then we have the Adeptus Militarium Imperial Guardsman, definitely just Imperial Guard because I'm lazy. You can take an Ogryn. These guys are beasts. He is movement 6, weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 3, strength and toughness of 5, 3 wounds, initiative of 2, 3 attacks and a leadership value of 6. 
His war gear is the ripper gun, frag grenades and flak armor. He may also do any of the following. Exchange his flak armor for carapace armor. Okay, job done. I would rather have a 4 up save than not, thank you. Uh, exchange his ripper gun for a grenadier gauntlet and st slab shield or power mall and brute shield. Um, I don't know, that's more role dependent. If you're looking for someone to just tank up in combat, it might be worth it. Personally, I like the idea of ripper guns because they remind me of Ogryn's ripping stuff up. Prodigious power. Generate a muscle skill for an Ogryn when you muster your kill team. So it comes with a free muscle skill. And bounty. If the Ogryn is down or out of action at the end of a mission, the enemy kill team scores an additional Promethean cash. So it could be a good reason to actually tank him up, but we'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still going to keep drinking, guys. You just got to deal with it because I do a lot of talking and I'm boring enough without not being able to enunciate properly. So, the Militarum Tempest Scion. He is... Movement 4, Weapon Skill 3, Ballistic Skill 4, Strength 3, Toughness 3, 1 Wound, Initiative of 3, 1 Attack, and Leadership 7. War gear wise, he has a WAS gun with Hot Shot Laser Power Pack. I love the fact that it's a Power Packs again. It's awesome. A Red Dot Laser Sight, a Photo Visor, Frag and Crack Grenades, Carapace Armor, all of the good stuff. He may also exchange his WAS gun for a flamer, a grenade launcher with frag and crack, a melter gun or a plasma gun. Flamers are good. Flamers are good in Necromunda. You'll like it. Just try it. You'll like it. Crack shot. When you roll an injury roll for shooting attack, blah blah blah, same as the last crack shot, you get to re-roll but not for the recurring injury rolls in the end phase. Commissar. Definitely going to shoot all of your own guys. He is movement four, weapon skill four, both skill four, strength three, toughness three, one wound, initiative three, attacks two, and a leadership of nine. This guy has the bolt pistol, chainsaw, frag and crack grenades, and flak armor. He may take a plasma pistol instead of his bolt pistol. And he may take a power sword or power fist instead of his chain sword. So, if you've got the old cool commissar of a power fist looking all grumpy, use that one. It's the best commissar. Fear me, but follow. Any friendly figure within six inches of a commissar can use the command leadership characteristic. For the, use a commissar's leadership characteristic when taking break tests and see if the fight recovers their nerve when broken. In addition... Any friendly fighters within 6 inches of a commissar can use a commissar's initiative characteristic when testing to escape pinning early. Finally, a kill team with a commissar automatically passes any bottle test whether you want it to or not. A, commoner, a commissar cannot confess these benefits if they... Sorry. A commissar cannot confer these benefits if they are down or broken. So you will never bottle if you have a commissar, which can be bad if you're getting absolutely mauled. Bottling can be useful. Finally, we have the Tech Priest Engine Seer. He is movement 4, weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 3, strength of 3, toughness 3, 1 wound, initiative of 3, 1 attack, and a leadership of 8. He comes with... A LAS pistol, a power axe, a servo arm, a frag and crack grenade, and power armor. He may soothe machine spirit. You can choose to re-roll any failed ammo rolls for friendly figures within six inches of a tech priest engine seer. Uh, eh, seems okay. Um, again, it depends how deep into like, plasma guns and stuff like that you've gone with your gang. I would probably be taking the Ogryn or a Veteran. Veteran with Flamer feels like the best choice in there. 
So yeah, basically you can take multiple specialists, you can take multiple of the same specialist, you've got to sacrifice a Promethean cash every time. If you don't have any Promethean, you can't take a specialist. Obviously, if you're spending it all the time to take specialists and not winning, you're going to get beaten in the campaign. So there's definite benefits to actually not taking them, but they do confer a good amount of strength, so it's... A little bit simpler than the old Necromunda way of hiring the, um, the big guns, getting Mad Donna in there to do the dirty work for you. This is a lot simpler, a lot streamlined. One of the real changes that I'm a really big fan of. But yeah, there you go. That's a special opportunist from the book, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll move on to the next video, which is probably going to be covering skills and post-game sequence. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.